Hello and welcome back to another episode of Sweet Left Foot Simulates. Now in this episode, we are gonna be having a look at how Jason Tyndall will do as the new Bournemouth manager. Of course, Jason Tyndall has spent a large part of his career at Bournemouth on the South Coast. He's now been given the opportunity to guide the Cherries back to the Premier League following Eddie Howe's departure. I, for one, am very intrigued to see how Jason Tyndall is going to do in the Championship with Bournemouth. A good squad available to him, should have a fair bit of money as well. You'd think, well, you'd think they'd come straight back up. Bournemouth fans, let me know in the comments if you think Jason Tyndall is the right man to take the club forward, if there's anybody else you would prefer to have in charge, and how do you think the club are going to get on this season in the Championship? Also, a big thanks to Aberrant FM for creating the database for not only this episode, but all the episodes under the Sweet Left Foot Simulate series. He's a fantastic content creator. He's on Twitch, he's on YouTube. Go and check him out. I'll leave all the links down in the description. Here he is then, the man himself, Jason Tyndall, 41 years of age, a fairly young manager. As you can see down here, he was a Bournemouth player between 1998 and 2006. He had a, a brief spell as an assistant manager between 2008 and 2009, and then was Eddie Howe's assistant from 2012 until his, his promotion to manager recently. So he knows the club. He's been here for a very long time. He's been in and around the first team. This, though, his first managerial job, unless you count Weymouth as a, as a player manager. Looking at his attributes, though, he looks, he looks okay for a first-time manager. These aren't too bad at all. I've seen a lot worse. And as you can see in the biography, AFC Bournemouth icon, Jason Tyndall. He's an icon at the club. I really hope he does well. I really, really do. We'll have a look at the squad Jason Tyndall is working with at the moment. Of course, no Nathan Aki. He's been sold to Manchester City, but this are the players at his disposal at the moment. Just browsing through this team, browsing through some of these names, there's a lot of talent here that shouldn't be in the championship. The likes of Aaron Ramsdale, Chris Metham, Philip Billing, Lewis Cook, Jefferson Lerma, Josh King, Callum Wilson, just to name a few. The squad is actually quite small, but those boys shouldn't be playing at this level. It'll be really interesting to see how Tyndall does in the transfer window. Of course, they're going to have some money to spend from the Nathan Aki transfer, but I am very intrigued to see which type of players he gets in, who he gets in, who he potentially lets go as well, and how he looks to adapt the squads to suit his style of play. If we have a quick look at the season preview, Bournemouth are predicted to finish, they're predicted to finish second. The three teams at the top of the media prediction, the season preview, Watford, Bournemouth and Norwich, the three teams that came down from the Premier League, they expect them, well, to, to have a very good chance of going straight back up. And looking at that Bournemouth side, You'd think they should. They also have a few players in the media Dream 11 here. Steve Cook at centre-back, Jefferson Lerma at centre midfield and Callum Wilson as the striker. They've got a very good base to go off Bournemouth. So if they can keep the bulk of their squad together, I, they, they should go back up, shouldn't they? They should definitely go straight back up. What we are going to do then is jump forward an entire season. We're going to come back around the end of May 2020 and see how Jason Tyndall has done in his first season at Bournemouth and see if he's been able to guide them back to the Premier League. Okay, welcome back. It is the 1st of June, 2020. There's nothing on this page that tells me how Bournemouth have done. Hopefully, hopefully, Jason Tyndall was A, still in a job there and B, at least guided them to a top six finish. So let's find out together how Bournemouth have done. You can see there, second in the Sky Bear Championship, Jason Tyndall still in charge, which is fantastic. You'd, you'd expect him to be. But there it is. Bournemouth finished second in the Sky Bear Championship. 98 points. That is huge. A massive eight points ahead of third place Norwich. Watford win the league on 107. But it's weird. The top three in the season preview, Watford, Bournemouth and Norwich, finished in exactly that order. Nottingham Forest come up by the playoffs as well. But Bournemouth, most importantly are back in the Premier League at the first time of asking. Jason Tyndall has guided the Cherries back to the top tier in England. I think my face might be covering it down here, but the top goal scorer for the season for Bournemouth was Callum Wilson with 26 goals. He also had the highest average rating with 7.38 and the most assists was Robert Snodgrass, who I believe would have been a new signing under Tyndall. If we have a look at Bournemouth's average league position for the season, that they didn't drop out of the top three the entire season, which is a testament to how good Jason Tyndall has done there. They were top of the league through to about match day 15, so about a third of the way through the season. Then they didn't hit top spot again, third and second place through to the end of the season. But they go up automatically. I don't think they're going to care 
if they go up first or second. They are back in the Premier League. In terms of cup competitions, knocked out in both the FA Cup and the Carabao Cup by Liverpool, which is an unfortunate draw in both competitions. But you've got to think, these cup competitions wouldn't have been a priority for Bournemouth this season. The priority would have been promotion. Looking at Bournemouth's best 11 then this season, interestingly, Tinder went with a 4-4-2. You look at some of the players in here, Jefferson Lerma, Philip Billing, Callum Wilson, Chris Mepham, Steve Kirk, Begovic, they kept the bulk of their team together. It doesn't look like they've let too many people go. Callum Wilson with 27 goals in the season, Dominic Solanke with 14, and Josh King with 13 as well. So their strikers, well, they did their job. In terms of transfers, who did Tindall sign? Uh, this season, his signings were from Snodgrass downwards. We had Snodgrass on loan, Eric Garcia, Henry Ogunbi, uh, Heriberto Taveres from Benfica on loan, Marcos Paolo and Thiago Dantas. Lots of names there that I'm not too familiar with. The one we were familiar with, though, Robert Snodgrass, who's, well, he looks like he's performed really well this season. Seven goals and 15 assists in the league, which is a, a superb return. No notable outs this season for Bournemouth, just junior Stanislas to Trabzonspor and Harry Arter out on loan. But as we said, they kept the bulk of their squad together and you've got to think that's one of the main reasons they bounced back straight away. Interestingly, Jason Tindall's contract expires at the end of this month. So what we're going to do is skip ahead just to see if he gets a new contract. I'm, I'm pretty sure they will give him one. They, they'll be stupid not to after getting them promotion. Once we've confirmed he'll have a new contract, we'll skip ahead and see how Jason Tindall gets on in his first full season as a Premier League manager. Okay, we are two days away from finding out if Jason Tindall did get a new contract. I'm 99% I'm sure he would have got one. Surely, surely. If we have a look at, where are they? Bournemouth. Jason Tindall, he's still in charge. He's got a two-year contract through to 2022. Amazing. I'm very happy for him. What we're going to do is skip ahead until the end of next season. And like we said, we'll see how he gets on in the Premier League. OK, welcome back. It's the 31st of May, 2021. The Premier League season has finished. This is the page the game has loaded on. Nothing I can see here again tells us how Bournemouth have done. See down here, the Watford manager's been sacked. The Brighton manager's been sacked. So it would be nice if those two have been sacked because they've been relegated and Bournemouth have stayed up. Well, find out together. We will find out together. Come on, Jason. I know you would have done a good job, my friend. Ninth! Surely not. He's he's still in charge, Jason Tindall. That is unbelievable. He's guided Bournemouth to a ninth place finish. Doesn't that equal their highest ever finish in the Premier League? I might be completely wrong there. I thought their highest finish was ninth before Bournemouth fans. Let me know. But that is that is unbelievable. In his first season as a Premier League manager, Jason Tindall has finished in the top half. He's only three points off Arsenal. Have they qualified for uh, the Europa League two? But still, three points off a European spot. That is brilliant. Callum Wilson, Dominic Solanke, joint top goal scorers with 13 each. Angelino, the left back with the highest average rating of 7.18. And the most assists were shared between Adam Smith and Lewis Cook. I'm slightly, I'm still shocked. That's an unbel... I did not expect Bournemouth to finish ninth in the Premier League. 54 points. That, oh, I mean, Jason Tindall. Well done, my man. In terms of the cup competitions, though, no luck again. The FA Cup knocked out in the fourth round by Newcastle. And yet again, two years in a row, knocked out of the Carabao Cup by Liverpool, this time in the quarter final. It would be nice for Bournemouth to win a domestic cup, wouldn't it? When was the last time they won a domestic cup? OK, they haven't. <laughs> I mean, they haven't. They haven't won the FA Cup. They haven't won the Carabao Cup. So I go back to saying it would be nice for them to win a cup competition. In terms of their best 11, let's have a look who made it in for this season. 4-4-2 yet again. And uh, lots of familiar names there still. Callum Wilson, Dominic Solanke, Jefferson Lerma, Mepham, Cook, Begovic. A lot of the same people from the first year. Another good season for Callum Wilson and Dominic Solanke. 17 and 13 goals respectively. Josh King not had the best of seasons. Only three goals, but it looks like he has been stuck out on the left wing. In terms of transfers, who did they sign? Who did Jason Tindall bring in? He spent £52 million this summer on Angelino from Man City, Timu Puki from Norwich. What did he do? OK, he didn't have a good season for Bournemouth. £15 million, not well spent by the looks of it. 19 appearances, only two goals and one assist. An average rating of 6.76. So, um, yeah, not the best bit of business from Jason there. 
Loic Nigo for 750,000, now worth just under 12 million. So a superb bit of business there. He can play all up the right-hand side. I think he's been quite important for Bournemouth this season. Thiago Dantas back in on loan. Connor Goldson from Rangers and Edwin Cardona from Tijuana. Did I say that right? Tijuana? We're going to go with Tijuana. But when you look at those transfers in, 52 million spent. It's been productive. They finished ninth. It's, it's worked. Whatever Jason Tindall's done here in the transfer window, it has worked. In terms of players out for Bournemouth this season, they made 22.5 million. Any significant players? Dan Gosling left for around 5 million. Harry Arta went out on loan again. Josh King left in, in January towards the end of the transfer window for around, well, you can see it there, 9.5, rising to potentially 11.75 to Spartak Moscow. That might explain why he only scored three goals this season. And Philip Billing left on deadline day as well to Leeds for just shy of 8 million. But when you look at things overall, that's very, very good business from Jason Tindall. Of course, he's still got one year left on his contract. So what we're going to do is skip forward another year. I want to come back around this time in 2022 and see if he's been able to take Bournemouth even further in the Premier League or at least try and win them a cup competition. I think that will be a perfect way to sign off this experiment. OK, it's the 31st of May 2022, the third and final season we're going to see of Bournemouth. Is it too much to expect them to finish higher than ninth? I mean, we've seen them get promoted in a very good season, finishing second. The first season back in the Prem, they finished ninth. Is it wrong of me to expect even more? But as you can see again, there's nothing on this page that tells me where Bournemouth have finished. Again, we will find out together. Let's hope Jason Tindall has, uh, has kept... Oh, OK. Well, let's hope he's kept his job, first of all. He's still in a job, which is nice, but uh, it's not been the best of seasons. The fact we have to scroll to see it isn't ideal uh, for Bournemouth. They finished 16th, so this season must have been much harder than the first one back in the Premier League. 16th place, seven points above the relegation zone, which is quite comfortable, you'd think. Norwich, Crystal Palace and Swansea go down. Bournemouth survived. They didn't hit the magic 40 points, but 38 was enough this season. I mean, I, I don't really know what to say about that. I'm a little bit disappointed, I must admit. After a ninth place finish, I'd, I'd expect them at least to finish, you know, mid-table, sort of ninth, 10th, 11th, 12th, around there, not 16th. Callum Wilson, again, the top goal scorer with 17. Chris Mepham, a highest average rating of 7.18. Ryan Kent with the most assists with seven. We just have to think of it like the first season back in the Premier League, they overachieved and finished ninth. This season, they've had a little bit of a reality check and finished 16th. So pushing on now, Jason Tindall, if he is still the man to take the club forward, will need to invest in the team again to keep them in the Premier League. We don't want a repeat of what happened with Eddie Howe. In terms of the cup competitions, Bournemouth just keep getting difficult ties. Knocked out in the quarterfinal of the FA Cup by Man United and in the Carabao Cup semi-finals by Man United. That is really unfortunate. What was the aggregate score in the semi-final? City went on to win it. Uh, in the semi-final, they lost 5-3 on aggregate, 3-2 at home, so it would have been 2-1 away at Old Trafford. Looking at the best 11 for this season, there are some familiar names which we've been used to seeing. The likes of Callum Wilson, Dominic Solanke, Jefferson Lerma, Chris Metham. Wilson, the top goal scorer this season with 24 in 47 appearances. Solanke second with 16 in 38. So again, the striker's doing really well for Bournemouth. Looking at the team, though, you'd think everywhere else they do need to start investing in a little bit more quality to take them to the next level. What did Tyndall do transfer-wise this season then? This summer, he spent, well, this season he spent £37 million and uh, made 35 Well, look at the ins first. Ryan Kent joined from Rangers, the, uh, the left winger. He seemed to have a good season for them. Three goals, seven assists in 32 games. It's not a bad return for your first season in the Premier League. Marco Malanika, I think he's the goalkeeper that was in the, the best 11 of the season. Conceded 42 in 29 Premier League games. Only five clean sheets, so not amazing. And I think he's, he's transfer listed already for 4 million, so not the best purchase there. Stefan Lehner joined from Napoli. Harrison Reed back in the Premier League. Ryan Edmondson from Leeds. Angus Gunn from Southampton could have been a good signing. He's quite a good keeper, I think. For £475,000, he played 12 games, conceded 16. Only the two clean sheets. So again, not a fabulous return from the Bournemouth keeper. It seems like they've chopped and changed between the two this season. And if you look down here, a few loans to round out their transfers. Eric Bailly, Enes Unal, Thomas Delaney and Edin Visca. Thomas Delaney is a fantastic pickup. How many games did he play for them this season? 33 games, just the one goal, two assists. You've got to think goal scoring isn't really his thing, but a, a fantastic player 
for Bournemouth to get on loan from Dortmund. Players out then, anyone significant? Diego Rico, Jack Stacey, Jack Simpson. Begovic left to go to Shakhtar Donetsk. Dan Juma left for Udinese. Aaron Ramsdale was sold very cheap to Nottingham Forest. So Bournemouth sold two keepers, signed two keepers. Adam Smith signed for Bordeaux. Lewis Cook left on loan and Steve Cook signed for Derby. I do feel though Jason Tindall did his best work in the transfer market in the second season here. Speaking of Jason Tindall, when does his contract run out? He's got a contract for another month. So we're just going to skip ahead just to see if he gets given a new one or if Bournemouth change direction and go with someone else. Okay, we are back. Let's just see if Jason Tindall has been kept on as Bournemouth manager. Has he? He is. He's got a new contract until 2024, so a new two-year deal. So it's clear Bournemouth are happy with the job Jason Tindall is doing as manager, and why wouldn't they be? In his first managerial job, he got them back into the Premier League at the first time of asking. He then had a ninth place finish. This season, not, not as good, but I'm sure he will bounce back. We are, however, going to leave this video here. I'm very, very glad Jason Tindall did well. I wish him all the best at Bournemouth in real life. If you've enjoyed the video, please do drop a like. If you want to see more, please subscribe to the channel. And feel free to have a look around the channel, see if there's any other Football Manager videos that you might like. I shall see you all next time. Take care. Goodbye.